Hello, this is Kinno, and um, uh, with this video series about uh, storm color regalia armor set and um, the the way it plays, I'm going to try to uh, fill some of my depths, which I have been promising to some people in the game, to make a proper uh, guide for this uh, because. I have been pushing this meta and uh, seems like it's working and uh, I see that there are people who are interested also in playing this set and uh, I will try to share all my knowledge what I have about it and uh, maybe some more people will play it and and push it even further than I have uh, I will skip a lot of information which you can actually find for the ELR set um, uh, guide which is written by Anba and uh, about about the game itself and how Mage plays you can find that in forums or in, in Discord I will just focus on this set and uh, my reasoning about uh, behind everything and I'm trying to help you build it so first of all uh, you need to get the set when you're a new player it's gonna be a bit harder because this set is only purchasable with uh, glory so you have to earn some glory with AMD events or if you uh, register with steam then there is a re reward which gives you a lot of glory from the start so if you really want to play this set then you can actually start from there and open the whole set for that glory but the set itself, it's Stormcaller Regalia, and uh, what it is about. So, uh, all of the sets in Eternium have um, different kinds of bonuses which uh, are unlocked when you put on enough parts of the set. And this exactly uh, has also six piece bonus, uh, four piece bonus, and two, two piece bonus. The two piece bonus is when a target receives damage from your blizzard. There is a 30% chance to, for affected targets to be hit by lightning for 3000 weapon damage. Mm. Some of you might uh, see this number and think that this is actually what it is about, but actually it isn't. This lightning damage is irrelevant for the whole set. It doesn't do almost anything. Uh, maybe in low levels, but in high level play this, is, this could actually not exist here and it would work as well. But what happens after it, uh, this is important. This 30% chance, uh, it procs the lightning and also it procs the lightning struck debuff on the mobs. They will start taking 100% more damage from uh, lightning and or on all nature damage actually. And it will reduce the damage dealt by the foe by 50% for 5 seconds. So this debuff is like 2 part debuff. And that's the important part of this set. Because when we move to the next bonus, then our arc lightning damage against targets which are lightning struck is increased by 1000%. This is not important for mob phases, but it's really important for boss phase. Because without lightning struck, basically you are only tickling the boss. So we want to have lightning struck up all the time on the bosses. And on the mob phase, it's decent, but on early levels you can clear with it, but on high levels it's just there. And for mob phase, actually this set has the 6 piece bonus. <clears throat> when our singularity does damage to the target, that is lightning struck. So we have cast blizzard on the mobs they get like drink lightning struck debuff then there is a 50 percent chance to spawn an event horizon it is static but slows targets in the area of effect each event horizon deals damage equal to 200 percent of singularity damage as nature damage to targets in the area so it's aoe effect and it does multiply the damage of the singularity uh, this explanation is quite vague what actually happens is that mm, we also we always have to understand how the damage works in this game and, and what is exactly done this is not a one-time damage as much as singularity hits the more hits you get off from the 
the event horizon. So this is an attack which has a lot of smaller attacks built into it. And when you play this set, you will also see that there is sometimes an FPS lag. The, the game becomes really slow. And this is actually caused by this because it does really, really a lot of hits. We had had some calculations that on a regular pack, which is about uh, 30 mobs, you will get off about 50,000 attacks altogether in one single combo. So that's why it, it reduces the FPS as well. So when we are playing, we want to have lightning struck up and we shoot singularity into mob mobs and they will spawn the event horizon, which is uh, holding the, the mobs uh, still and dealing a lot of damage to them. Uh, all the pieces I have on. Uh, uh, so this is how the the damage comes from the set. So mainly for mobs, we are damaging with event horizon for bosses we damage for with arc lightning when you see the damage sheet in the end of uh, trials it's actually not representing the proper mm, mm, way how we deal damage to a single target because most of it all most of the damage is done in mob phase and we see that event horizon does a lot of damage but actually in reality event horizon for boss doesn't do that much it does some damage, but it's not that much. Uh, so, and with this set, we have different options for uh, for trinkets and for capes and for weapons. But best in slot is what I'm using at the moment. So, uh, we use Integral's mantle for uh, for our cape. Mm, this has a chance to increase your ability rate. If you have a good Integralis, it's going to be around 500 uh, ability rate with 5 stacks. I have a pretty bad one, but I don't care about it, so it's a small difference. It doesn't make much for me. Uh, for the trinkets, I will actually start from the lower one. It's Talisman Storms. Storms. Uh, I'm using the, the crit version of this uh, set. Uh, so. Any crit build in the game needs this uh, trinket because it will increase your critical damage uh, by 3000%. And this is huge and it can happen two times per minute. So it's an, it has an internal cooldown of 30 seconds. This is actually with, which we will be utilizing a lot uh, and we will take advantage of this cooldown and try to time it proper when, when we get to the gameplay. For the other trinket, I'm using the Brooch of the uh, Stormcaller. Uh, this has a chance to hit the enemy for 25,000 weapon damage. And it jumps to next target, similarly like uh, Arc Lightning does. Every, every jump will reduce uh, damage, which it does, and it can jump five times. This happens six times per minute, so you small uh, fast calculations you get one prop per, per 10 seconds basically another option for this uh, trinket is to use vial i hope i have vial oh, somewhere yeah. uh, let's see where is it yeah here is some vial which actually which i have been using you can use also vial uh, it will increase your haste uh, up to 500 and uh, you will de deal 50,000 damage, 15,000 damage uh, as an area of effect to all the targets around you. Uh, it needs 10 stacks and when you when you hit the 11th then actually the blow up comes and uh, uh, in, in normal gameplay when you're constantly attacking it's also about uh, uh, six times per minute so Every one stack gets one second to add, so it's pretty similar. So the difference is that we get 500 haste, and the the damage itself is a bit lower. We might think that 500 haste is better, but in reality, it's very situational. In my build, I like the the storm color brooch better. I have seen better damage numbers with it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, then we move forward. For weapons, we use the 
uh, forbidden knowledge set. Uh, there are different bonuses which, which this set offers us. Uh, first thing is on the weapon, when any cooldowns is uh, restored, we create a ripple with 10,000 uh, weapon damage. This damage is arcane damage. We don't have any arcane damage on the gear, so it doesn't help us. It even it even isn't on the sheet, so basically we are not using this set for this bonus. It used to be nature damage, and then we could see like 2% damage done by Ripple, but uh, now it's arcane damage and nothing syn synergizes with this damage on our set, so, so yeah, it's not uh, good. For offhand, it's the second part of this set, it's Akamar, um, and uh, uh, this deals 100% more damage with deflected attacks. There are some cool things you can do with this build, which actually use this uh, deflect, but this is more advanced gameplay, maybe I will get to that later, but um, in start you just don't, don't pay attention to this one. What we are after? We are after to, for the two-piece bonus. When you are dealt to killing blow, instead of dying, you are in a protective void ward for six seconds, and it will heal us 100%. Uh, and uh, this has a cooldown of 90 seconds. Uh, the gameplay of this set is that we have really fast move phase and very slow boss phase because it this set has very high AOE damage and very low single damage. Uh, single target damage. What this set gives us is a cushion, basically. We are allowed to do a critical mistake after each 90 seconds, so one and a half minutes into boss fights. After every one and a half minutes, we can actually mess up really bad and we will not die because this will help us and, and save us. So basically, we can actually say that all the boss skills for this set are actually. Uh, in small sections of times of one and a half minutes so this is important and well the weapon set itself it's a bit more damage i have tried shields i have tried many uh, the the didris resolve uh, sword but eventually you still want a lot of damage with the build so this set is the best to use uh, for bracer we are using arc lightning uh, damage bracer I get a lot of questions that, that maybe I should use Singularity, but Singularity itself does nothing in terms of damage, and uh, we would think that boosting the Singularity damage will help the, the six-piece bonus, but actually the bonus added for the Singularity Bracer doesn't affect this one, they are separate, so even if we boost up the singularity damage, the, the event horizon damage doesn't get any benefit from it. So the arc lightning damage is the best one to use because we are lacking single target damage and we need to put everything into that department where we can damage boss uh, more. So arc lightning is the way to go. For belt, we are using arcane belt of shielding. Um, this gives us uh, uh, 8,800 deflect rating, but it reduces 1,100 armor. It used to be uh, 4,400 deflect rating. Then this belt was actually pretty bad. But now it's okay, because we don't have any better belt to use for the build. And uh, this deflect rating combined with uh, uh, Mage's uh, uh, natural deflect rating uh, it will actually get us up to where is this? It will actually get us up to almost eleven thousand, and this is forty-three percent. I will take a second and talk about deflect as well, because this is also something which people uh, struggle to understand how it works. Uh, so any damage you get, not it, it doesn't affect the AOE damage. Any direct damage the boss or mob does to you. At the moment, I have 43% chance to reflect this 60% uh, of that damage. Uh, this means that this 60% of damage is the damage which I will not take. So it will reduce uh, the damage incoming by 60%. Uh, 
and I will uh, reflect it. In base, it's 60% now it will reflect, reflect, but it is increased by power. It is increased by different items, as you saw for the Akmar. Uh, this, 100% more. This increases it. And uh, eventually, yeah, the, the most important part which increases the damage is the, the, the power. Uh, unfortunately, any other damage boosting uh, ability doesn't uh, increase the damage. Uh, the debuffs on the boss work, but buffs on ourselves doesn't like. Like, for example, power infusion, uh, our own uh, time warp, uh, these don't increase the deflect damage. Only power does. And deflect damage is arcane damage, so if we actually add it arcane damage, arcane damage also increases the deflected damage. But any other doesn't. But when we debuff the boss, for example, Slayer and uh, Immolate, these but put the deflect uh, debuff on the boss, which actually makes the boss take more damage. Then uh, the deflected damage is also increased. So it's a bit difficult to understand, but in general, we are using the deflect rating of this build just for damage mitigation. We are not relying on damaging anyone with it. Because there are only few occasions in the game where deflect actually works, and it's just a cool trick to use. So this is about deflect damage. Uh, also, a lot of people ask me why I don't use uh, the other belt, which is Belt of Whispered Secrets. Mm. Which actually, uh, in paper, it, it seems like this belt uh, is built for the Stormcaller set. This says that dealing damage with deflected attack causes the target, target to become lightning struck. So it's lightning struck, it's the same debuff which we have on our set. So it's like a secondary application, and we can uh, like make sure that lightning struck is up on the boss or on any foe all the time. The issue with this is that it has a bug inside. This lightning struck which you get from the belt doesn't have the damage reducing debuff, uh, as you see here. Uh, the buff on the belt ends here it, they only take more damage they don't get this part where the foe does less damage to you and for the survivability and viability of the set this is very very important this is what we want to use because without that damage reduction we will get killed really fast and the bad thing about the other belt the whispered secrets belt is that it is the same buff and they are overwritten. So when I cast Blizzard, we get this lightning struck. Now if this wears off and they hit me and get deflected, they get the lightning struck from the belt. But if I, during the debuff, I will cast Blizzard, then it will refresh the debuff from the belt. So I will still not get the damage uh, reduction. The only way to get the other buff is to let the, oh, the the wrong lightning struck to wear out and then cast Blizzard. It's risky gameplay. I have had some success with it, but it's really annoying and bad. And actually, I take it as a bug. It should be fixed. But in general, I even think that even if they fix it just on the belt and they don't do anything about other bonuses, then uh, I don't think that the belt becomes viable either. because we have Blizzard, and if we have enough uh, ability rate, we can keep up the lightning struck with Blizzard all the time. So the belt is not needed. We will take the the defense we can get from Arcane Belt of Shielding, and, and that is actually a lot better option for us. Uh, for jewelry, I will not get uh, deep into the jewelry at the moment, because you see those, these are the the standard stats you are, we are using for critical builds and anyone who is building any set in this game uh, jewelry is the part where you can actually optimize uh, you get the stats you want as you see on this one i have ability rate power ability rate critical rating critical damage and on this one we are not using ability rate we are using haste instead because i have i have multiple pieces of jewelry and i will balance my set 
investment. As you see, I don't have any gems socketed, and this is also intentional at the moment because gems are the other way we are balancing the set. Mm -hmm. In general, the most valuable gem you can put into into the uh, armor into the your armor pieces is armor uh, gemstone because 200 armor compared to other uh, uh, stats which give you 50 is really powerful. So you want to balance your sets usually around uh, where you can use most armor gemstones in the set and and put your damage under care. Uh, now I'll talk about uh, enchantments. Uh, enchantment for head is osmosis. Without this, this set is dead. We can't do anything to bosses. We can uh, do really good on other parts, but on bosses we are relying on this. We need to increase the damage in time because the boss fights on high end usually take around eight minutes on this set. We clear moves really fast, but then we will start the boss fights which are long. On so shoulder, critical damage, this is usual. On uh, chest, we are also using life on hit. You can use vitality, whichever you need at the moment. I just need life on hit here. Here, there is also three options. You can use haste, you can use power, you can use critical rating, whichever you need most at the moment. So it's not set in stone. For the gloves, usually we are using dodge rating because Dodge rating uh, from the start gives really a lot of defense and only this glove enchant gives us... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I have some other dodge piece on. Oh, let's take... I think it's on the chest. Then I can show you. Yeah, 100 dodge rating is already 7.5% chance to dodge. So, uh, dodge is good. In these terms, like this is damage you are completely avoiding. When you dodge, you don't get any damage. And um, some I have used parry previously on some of the pieces, and I want to apologize anyone who copied my builds. Uh, I was just clueless to some facts. Well, actually, I knew about it them, but I didn't think uh, deeply uh, through all of those things. For example, there are bosses you can't parry. So that that becomes useless. For example, Garm, you can't parry any of uh, his attacks, so uh, all of that defense is lost, basically. Uh, when you parry a ranged attack, it only reduces 50% of the damage uh, you receive. But when you parry a melee attack, then it's 100%. So only for Morgoth and uh, Elban is where you want to have parry, but those are actually the easiest bosses for this build to kill. So we want most defense for other bosses. So, so dodge is a better option. And uh, and actually, I have been straying away from dodge uh, lately. This is here only because I can't reforge it off because I made this from from a Lily set or from from an A and B set. So I can't change it at the moment. Uh, uh, so yes, dodge is what we are using on the gloves. Uh, of course, here is movement speed on both uh, items. On jewelry, uh, again, use here power, use here vitality, whichever you need more at the moment. And the same goes for the, the rings. You can use critical rating, you can use power. You see you have different uh, stats here. It just depends what you need at the moment, which gives you more damage. <clears throat> and for the weapon, we are using Incinerate. Uh, this is an effect where like, we are stacking up uh, a fire dot on the target, and it will stack up in the infinitely. So as long as we don't lose this, so we can we get off another hit before five seconds is over, you get, we will add another. Uh, stack of this. It happens 40 times per minute uh, and uh, so basically we get 40 stacks per minute. Uh, this is uh, actually an enchant which you want to use in the end game, the end end game. Because uh, unless your boss fight takes more than seven minutes, then Incinerate is better 
if it takes less than seven minutes, use Slayer because Slayer is better than well, Incinerate uh, combined with Osmosis after seven minutes starts to do really ridiculous damage. After eight minutes, it's going to just melt everything. And what is also cool about Incinerate is that these dots can can crit as well. Uh, the dot has many many uh, ticks inside it, and for example, if uh, Talisman of Storm procs, then and we have for example, I have 50% uh, of uh, crit rating, so the dot actually does get uh, 3,000 uh, percent. Uh, damage increase um, uh, divided by two so it's basically 1500 percent damage increase because there are so many ticks that the RNG doesn't any uh, doesn't uh, come into play anymore because it is flat flat 50 percent increase you when you have the floating text on you will see that once those uh, DOS hits the damage is flat increase so we want to use it because sometimes we can't attack while the toss hits. We don't want to lose any of those debuffs. So uh, incinerate does almost 40% of our damage by the end of the boss fight. So we are not losing the debuff that much as we would with, for example, Slayer and uh, TOS hits. But we are in a phase where we can't attack the boss. So we are losing completely all the damage we could have done. So the incinerate so when you are starting you slayer when you are in the end the game you incinerate and incinerate is sometimes harder to keep up because when you start running dodging there is a, a threat of losing the debuff uh, any damage you do the, to the target will actually increase it so you can cast blizzard you can cast singularity uh, those things will also increase the stacks it is the same for osmosis so even if you can't attack with your arc lightning try to leave a blizzard or 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 a singularity uh, flying then it, you will not lose it but it still sometimes happens so it's a risky par part uh, and for the offhand we are using uh, uh, off obfuscation the most uh, awesome name for a for an enchant it will just reduce damage from distant targets so sometimes it benefits us but sometimes we need to be in the face of the mob so there is just not better option for the uh, for this so this is about gear uh, and how we balanced it so for example if we need more toughness you see i don't have a lot at the moment i can just stack up armor gems and you will see it will start to rise a lot a lot and at some point uh, we will get in, into um, a point where uh, actually the gain from the armor is less than gain from the vitality we you see this one here uh, these numbers work really well for this set so you can actually go buy them all the time uh, uh, at the moment we get 2.6 uh, percent toughness and only 2.3 from the vitality so we go for armor until we get to a point where armor doesn't give that much enough. so this is where we are even in my case actually I prefer to go even further I would say that less than two percent toughness increase i i would start to use uh, vitality because uh, armor also gives you recover recovery is very, very important in this <clears throat> build so we attack we recover health and actually it's like an extra toughness so we can just stack up on uh, on those gems gemstones or when we get the proper uh, value we need for the toughness and we can undertake the boss and for damage it's exactly the same we just check whichever gemstone gives us more damage so you see haste doesn't give us much at the moment but we power and critical rating uh, does give us the same amount probably if i add few critical rating 
you see it dropped for 0 0.7. Let's continue with power. And that's actually how you balance the set. Uh, so that part is easy. And that's why I said put on whatever enchantments you need for those, those damage stats. There is not much difference. Now let's talk about stats itself. What we want to have, what we want to achieve. I will take off the companions, then we can see the bare amount uh, and how to balance things. Mm. Any critical build, we want to has, have as much critical damage as possible. So all your gear, wherever you can put it, this is no exception. You want to have this as much as possible. Uh, also goes for nature damage, you want to have as much as possible. Uh, for haste, uh, it depends how are your breakpoints on the on your gaming rig. Mm -hmm. For me, actually, anything about five hits per second on boss phase doesn't increase much my damage. Mm -hmm. If you want to know exactly what are breakpoints, you can search around. I will not get deeper into that. But what is important is that. Uh, Event horizon damage is directly calculated by your hits per second. So any number you add here, it increases the damage of event horizon very, very much. So in my case, I'm, I used to play on 5.5 .5 hits per second a lot, but then I found out some different strategies and now I have started to use uh, archers as companions and you see that my damage uh, hits per second is on six and this is really good for mob phase so this is a, it, having 5.5 .5 here and six it can have a 30 second difference on mob phase at on really really high damage on high trials so it's not lost, lost stat so completely but on bosses just remember that this is not uh, about five, it's not adding as much as it could. Uh, and why is that also is that because we are using some skills which are increasing our attack speed by a lot. If we were just using the six hits per second, then the, the, the breakpoints wouldn't be as bad. But we are using two skills which are increasing our attack speed a lot, which is Arc Lightning. Oh, nice. Okay, I can't put my mouse there it increases my attack speed by five percent and it stacks uh five times so it's 25 percent from arc lightning and also we are using time warp and this speeds up 50 percent no no 30 percent sorry so the attack speed gain from those two things is really huge and this six attacks per second becomes more close to like 10 attacks per second and uh, usually uh, that, that attack speed breakpoints for the PC they will start to fall off you don't get as many procs for it and you don't get as many hits off actually because the game doesn't count them anymore it is affected by your frames per second on your uh, uh, monitor and about the speed of your system uh, overall uh, coming, going further, uh, as I told, critical rating and uh, power, those you just balance. Whichever gives more, use that one. Uh, becoming lower, yeah. Vitality. When you are a beginner, I suggest running more toughness and less damage. When you are getting better with the build, you can start removing some toughness from the build and going for more forward for the damage and uh, uh, for life on hit as well i'm using 3300 you can use uh, more i used to be running about four and a half thousand or five thousand it's gonna help you out a lot especially when you are going with a lot more toughness then add more life on hit as well because the gameplay changes a bit uh, when you have more toughness and i will get to that later or, or shortly i will explain 
uh, if you have more toughness, then you be, have to build it as much so that you can face tank most of the bosses, most of the hits, because you are reducing your damage, but you need to increase your toughness so you can take all the hits from them and you don't break off from the boss even for a second. So you are using your toughness for damage because you attack them more. When you are running lower toughness, you need to rely more on procs and time your attacks better. So you will attack them when your all your buffs are running, and you can you dodge them when you don't have those running. So it needs more advanced gameplay. In general, you want to have balance between damage and uh, toughness. Uh, ability rate. This is something which I have been debating on a lot, and I have seen some players run. No ability rate. Some players have run a lot of ability rate. So <laughs> I could say that I have been now leaning towards more ability rate. I, actually, I would I would like to have this on fifteen hundred. Uh, why is that? Um, although we are losing some of the damage, we are gaining uh, better cooldowns. This means that we have more time warp up. Right? up Time to, uh, and we have more uh, possibilities to cast Blizzard because we want to have lightning struck up all the time on the bosses. So having more ability rate will just give you that security. And uh, going over 1500 is a waste because uh, what we are after are the alacrity procs and the alacrity procs stop at 2000 our ability rate so we get 500 from the integral as mentor you have 1500 here and uh, this all together is maximum we could go for so yeah now i have been playing with more ability i used to run about 1150 that was my normal number but having a bit more gives this better uh, security and there, it is also situational. On some bosses you can run lower ability rate, on some bosses you want to have higher. For example, on Elban you want to have higher because then you can keep him lightning struck all the time. And it also happens that sometimes lightning struck doesn't get on the boss because there is only a 30% chance to get the proc. So sometimes he runs out from your blizzard without lightning struck and then there is all this time when it takes to cool down the blizzard uh, where you have to avoid the boss because it doesn't have lightning struck on it and it will kill you instantly basically because <laughs> it, he will hit really hard so that's about the stats uh, yeah there isn't much more to talk about here uh, about the stats also, what I <clears throat> forgot to tell about deflect rating is that how it procs. It procs a bit differently than any other. Uh, uh, all other damage mitigations have like order. Like first, I don't exact, exactly remember how the order is, but it's something like that. Like first, they will roll if it's a parry. No, it's not a parry. Then they will roll if it's a dodge. If one of them is uh, proking, then the other one is not. So. You either parry, you either dodge, you either block, or you don't do any of them. But deflect rating works separately. So you can deflect anything, any attack. So you can deflect also the attack which you dodged. So basically you take zero damage, but they still take damage from your deflected attack. So you can deflect your parried, dodged, blocked, or normal attack. You can deflect all of them. And Deflect also doesn't, doesn't have any diminishing return. So if you manage to get 25,000 Deflect rating, then it's 100%. So you are deflecting all attacks, which is pretty good. But it's a really heavy investment. And uh, then the build doesn't come viable anymore. <laughs> I have tried it. It works. So yeah, that's what, or one more thing. Uh, now I will try it. Uh, I will explain about the skills. Mm. On this build, we are using uh, Frostbolt. It's just here to fill it out because when you play on PC, I want to have on this secondary attack, but you have to have something on primary attack. Otherwise, the the, the character doesn't do anything. So basically, we don't need 
any other for main attacks we need only only arc lightning then for uh, abilities these three are mandatory time warp very very good i would argue that this might be the best skill in the game and there is something which people don't understand about it. first of all it increases your damage by 60 percent then increase it increases your attack speed by 30 percent this is very very big damage boost especially for time warp uh not time warp event horizon uh and now what it does for the en enemy is that it slows the attack speed of the enemy by 50% and actually it also increases the cooldowns of the enemy by the same amount, by 50%, no actually it's 100%. It is not written here, but when you check the debuff on the mob, there is, uh, there is the debuff for the cooldown. So what happens is that, for example, when you fight Kara, when you have time warp up, it increases the cooldowns of the boss and she will spawn 50% less of the the ads and this is for any boss basically any any mob you will increase the cooldowns and they will cast them less frequency so this is very defensive and also increases your attack i don't know that if there is any skill in the game that does so many things for you and to, for your damage and for debuffing the the the, the enemy blizzard this is only for application of uh, of the lightning struck and same goes for singularity we use this only for cocking the uh, the event horizon those two skills itself they do zero damage for the build for this set but we want them only for for uh, procking our stuff there is another way of playing this as i told that you can play it also with high deflect so then you change actually out the time warp with paradox uh, in this with this skill you get you will become immune for two seconds and uh, any damage you receive you get the shield which lasts for 12 seconds and then you have more 30 percent more damage this is much worse skill than uh, time warp but it has one cool use. Um, you can deflect anything while you are in the shield. Well, the build has another shield. This is from the set, uh, from the weapon set. But this shield makes you immune. So any damage you receive while being in this shield, you don't deflect. But this one actually, uh, you will deflect anything you are you you get in this shield. So a boss where what you can kill with this one is Magroth. Uh, you use Paradox uh, when he casts his Meteors and you you take damage from the Meteors while you are in the shield and basically you deflect the, that damage to the boss and that damage is really high. When you get all procs and stuff aligned and especially in the end of the end of the Osmosis text and then you can easily take 30% of the boss health in one hit basically. But this is, it's fun to use, but doesn't work on other bosses, so we will use Time Warp. Now for passives, there are many options, uh, uh, which is, uh, Power Infusion is something we will never change out, basically, because this will, this is a big damage boost and we will want to have this all the time. But for other skills, you see, I'm using Celerity here, I'm using Class Cannon, when you, I mean, need more toughness, I can put endurance for a glass cannon, and uh, I still have the celerity. Uh, when I want to have like some more damage, less attack speed, I can use this version. When you fight Magroth, you you might want to use also Mage Armor. This will also boost your deflect rating and also increase the damage built by the deflected attack. So for this Magroth fight. It does work. There is one player which is using in in, uh, in A and B also. Only for Magroth, he's always using the Mage Armor. But I can kill Magroth the other way also, so I haven't not I have not utilized this. Don't use intense training because the ability rate increased by this is actually not worth it. Uh, put the ability rate on the gear and use celerity because this celerity gives you 250 haste 
while intense tra training gives you only 150 millit rate. So yeah, it's not. It doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, currently I'm using mostly I'm using this. Uh, no, I'm using this way. Celerity, glass cannon, power infusion, and for harder bosses I'm just gonna change out glass cannon. Uh, one thing also which you need to know about glass cannon is that this 20% damage increase it shares the damage increase from time warp and from uh, power infusion. So it is a shared damage increase. When you are not using this one, actually those two gives you more benefit. It is a math issue which asks our math geniuses if you want to know more about them. Uh, what I just found this out yesterday, uh, Ludwig uh, tested this, is that arc lightning damage increase is separate from those all of those others. So that's actually really cool to know. Uh, yeah, so this is about skills and about companions. When you are doing low level playing, uh, I suggest using two healers. When you are still learning the set, when you are uh, learning the combos, then having two healers is better because then you have like two vortexes uh, to pull the mobs together and it might be faster for you. Uh, for the last companion, you can use Marcus, you can use uh, archers, don't use, uh, don't use these guys. Xanans, <laughs> they are bad for everything. <laughs> but the reasoning is, um, I have started to use only one healer because on high level uh, you can really easily clear mobs when you have all the procs aligned. Uh, meaning that you want to have TOS proc, you want to have power infusion proc, proc and you want to have them at the same time. Uh, fortunately, we have. Uh, Vortex. Uh, it's weird that it has the cooldown reduction from my, <laughs> from my. Uh, this is a bug probably in the game. Actually, Vortex has 30 seconds cooldown. Our ability rate doesn't affect it. Uh, so Vortex has 30 seconds cooldown. Uh, TOS has 30 seconds cooldown, and Power Infusion also can. It doesn't say here, but it it, it can also happen two times per minute. So. Uh, it, it it aligns very perfectly. Uh, so if I use two vortexes, sometimes I get uh, the buffs uh, uh, not in sync, and then actually you lose out a lot of damage. Using only one healer prevents you doing any combos before all your cooldowns have finished, because vortex has 30 second cooldown and all our other procs have also 30 second cooldown. So we use Vortex, we can make sure that we can all, all our other procs will happen as well. I will show that in the gameplay video, uh, but uh, first of all, I just wanted to make one about gear and uh, how, you can, how you can build the character and what are important stats with it. Uh, something more to note about it is when you do this set, don't don't start XP farming with it. It's very bad for XP farming, and um, for any other thing, you you can't gold farm with it. So basically, it's only for pushing, <laughs> and, and it it's even not the fastest for the pushing. Uh, you can get higher trials with uh, with beam um, faster, but eventually they will level up. It's it's the same issue because the boss phase is really long with this set and it's even it's quite long also on, on lower trials. So uh, so that's why. Usually what I do in, in A and B events I do well class mostly. I'm playing warrior to level my uh, champion levels and then I will delete the warrior and I will make mage. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of grinding, but this is the most efficient for me. If you want to have play pure mage, farm XP with other uh, set and then uh, switch over to 
storm color regalia for pushing. Uh, when you farm XP with Elemental Lord regalia, this then then it's uh, also quite a lot of work to switch over. You will gain XP faster, but then you have to have uh, multiple skills to level and uh, you will still want to have either you will go for uh, death from above or beam you have to level those skills to be fast on, on grinding and then additionally you have to level your your uh, storm color set uh, uh, skills but there is also an option to use arcanist set for uh, xp farm arcanist is actually pretty good because it shares the weapons and it shares all the skills basically you don't you don't use blizzard with the uh, arcanist set but with arcanist set you're usually this is actually how you will uh, where is this yeah, you will use that that's what you usually use use with the uh, arcanist set so you have to level blink but not above level 7 in A and B, so this is not a huge investment. Uh, you want to have arcade bolts at 10, but this, this is still way less skills. All the others are actually the same, so you see, we only have two different skills, but for for ELR, all the skills are basically different. So, so and the sets and the set pieces are different, which we are using. So, don't farm XP with. For fun, you can try. I have tried it, but it's not. You can check out my videos in my uh, in my channel. So, and also you can find the, the video about Arcanist set for XP farm. Just have to remind you, Arcanist set for XP farm. It's really fast at the start because it has so much power, but it it lacks the crowd control. So in the end they. The, the runs are not getting any faster, but just the time gained in the beginning, it's it's worth it sometimes. If you don't want to do all class, and if you don't want to play Beam or, or Death from above, then play Arcanist. But it's harder to play some, at some points. I like it, but it's, yeah, <laughs> it's not most efficient. For me, most efficient is Warrior to Mage, and I'm usually using that way. Uh, so I think that I pretty much covered everything what uh, I needed to say about this set and about the stats and the way you need to build it. And um, yeah, so if you follow this one, it will at least get you started. And just remember, at start, build more toughness, less power and transition over. And you can do that easily with your jewelry. Build a set with the damage stats you need and use your your jewelry for for switching out from more defenses to more offense so you don't have to redo the set as much thank you this time and uh, see you in the next video